Hi everyone and welcome back. It's Vicky here and today I'm going to have lots of fun using my foiling machine. I'm using the Spellbinders Glimmer Hot Foil System. I turned on the switch at the back and you can see the red light. And now I'm going to put the plate in place and lock it there. So it is going to start uh, warming up. I'm going to put that machine on the side. And let's take a look at the Dyson and the foiling plates that I have here. Spellbinders have uh, amazing monthly kits and one of them is specifically designed for hot foiling. So this month, for March, you get this lovely foil in blue. I think the color is called uh, Sky Bright. You also get three eggs, all with different designs and I will be working with all of these today. So it's all about Easter on this kit. You also get five different uh, words that you can mix and match. And these are happy, Easter, spring, wishes, and hello. You also get a die that cuts out sentiments, lovely thin strip. And you also get dies that cut out eggs. One of them is the exact same size as the falling plates, but you get two more sizes that you can cut out of cardstock or from the foiled eggs just to make them look smaller. Now, as I'm waiting for my machine to warm up, I'm going to bring in some cardstock and I'm going for an Easter card with pastel colors today. So I'm bringing in three scraps of uh, cardstock here and I'm going to combine them with similar colors of foil. The first one, the bluish, is the one that was included in the kit. The rest of them are uh, foils that I had on my stash, but you can make the same design just by using the blue one that was in the kit. Now I'm bringing in my machine and you can see that the green light is turned on, which means that my plate is ready. Don't be afraid to touch it, it's not going to burn you. However, I wouldn't uh, advise that. Just be careful. Now I'm going to place my eggs on top. Then I will apply the foil on top of the eggs, making sure that the shiny side is facing the eggs. And then on top I'm going to place the cardstock. Now I don't mind if I have a foil that is slightly larger than the egg. And as you can see, I'm not going to trim the edges of my foil. I don't worry about overfoiling at this stage, since I will be using the dies later on to cut out the eggs. So I'm just using small pieces of uh, scraps from this um, cardstock, making sure that I have everything covered up and then I'm going to apply on top my shim and my plate to create my sandwich. And in the instructions they tell you to press the timer just to make sure that your plates are warmed up enough, but I did have uh, my plates uh, enough time as I was placing all the foils and, scra and scrap paper on top, so I didn't do that at all. Now I'm running uh, the sandwich through my die cutting machine and I'm going to do that very slowly and run it through twice. And the fun part about hot foiling is that not only you get the foil on top of your projects like you would do with a laminator, but you also get a debossed effect which is exactly as if you were using a letterpress. Now I'm going to lock the plate again in place just to make sure that it is nice and warm for the next step when I do foiling again. And then I will remove the plates and notice how I touch them with my fingers. They are actually not hot. So don't be afraid, you will not get burned. Now I am going to show you everything I did. So here is the pink egg. Here is the blue egg. It is so difficult to catch on camera both the shine as well as the debossed effect. And let's take a look at the green one. Everything turned out really beautiful. And uh, now I will place the die on top and run all the eggs through my die cutting machine to cut them out. And I did repeat the same process to create one more egg which is going to be yellow. That was uh, gold foiling on yellow cardstock. Now I'm creating a Easter card and that's why I will work with those two plates that uh, read Happy Easter. I'm making sure that I place them correctly and I'm using a ruler just to make sure that this is going to be nicely aligned there at the center and completely straight. 
Now I'm going to use a piece of washi tape to keep those two plates in place and this is something I learned from Janas Makula and uh, I think this is absolutely genius. You will uh, know where exactly you are going to foil and it really makes your life easier when it comes to foiling directly on top of your card. So now I'm going to cut out a small piece of foil so that I can place it underneath my plates making sure that the pretty side of the foil is facing the sentiments. I'm going to cut off any excess foiling. I don't want to have too much there since I want to avoid overfoiling. I'm placing that on my machine and this is where you need to place the timer if you want to use the machine correctly. I'm too impatient to, wa to wait for that and I found out that even if I don't use the timer everything goes pretty fine as long as the plate is completely warm. So anyway I created my sandwich. I'm going to run it through my die cutting machine. And now let's take a look on what we've done. I'm going to remove the plate and the shim. I'm having so much fun playing with foiling. I don't know about you, but this is such a wonderful experience. Now I'm going to remove the foil as well as the washi tape very carefully to make sure that I don't make any boo-boos on my card. And I'm going to show you the wonderful sentiment nicely debossed as well as foiled. A lovely letterpress look. I cut out this panel to be slightly smaller and now I'm using some washi tape to secure on top a circle so that I can create a window. You can turn it into a shaker card or on a window card like I'm doing here. I have a die in my stash forever that cuts out grass and I cut out two strips of grass so that I can place them behind the window and the first one is going to go directly on top while the second one is going to go with some foam tape. This way I will allow for some dimension so that I can tuck underneath my eggs. If you don't have a die that cuts out grass, then just use your scissors and create some slopes like green hills that you can lay one on top of the other and you will get a similar look. Now I have some foam tape at the back and I'm going to stick this panel directly on top of my card base. By the way, my card base is a standard card size that's four and a quarter by five and a half. And this is where I realized that I forgot to add my sky. I was planning to do some inking on my background so that I can have some kind of a sky on uh, top of the grass, but I completely forgot. So now I have to do something now <laughs> and I'm just working one of my blending brushes to go underneath as much as I can. If you're recreating this card, make sure that you add your sky first before you stick your panel on top. But I think that there is always a way to fix things and at the end it's going to look just fine. And now finally it's time to put my card together. I am going to stick down the egg that I prepared and you will see that I decided not to use the green egg after all since I do have green on my card from the grass. For one of uh, the eggs, the one that is standing in front, I am using some uh, foam square at the back to add some dimension. And for the yellow and pink egg, I'm going with glue. So they are going to be at the background, laying completely flat. You can leave your card as it is, it looks stunning, but I decided to add one more thing. So I have a couple of um, branches here that I cut out from a die that I had in my stash. And I'm just going to stick them uh, close together so that I can stick on top a couple of uh, white flowers that I have cut out. I'm using my white glue to stick everything down and Ginger is going to come and inspect if I'm doing a good job. And although he is not making an appearance on each and every one of my videos, rest assured that he is always sleeping next to me inside the box of products. Now to finish off my card I'm going to add some centers on my white tiny little flowers. So for that I'm using some uh, yellow gems that I had in my stash. And this concludes the card for today. Let me grab the light for you so you can see how shiny it is. Here are some close-up photos. There is a product list down below in the description area with links to everything I used. 
I hope that you had fun today, that you got inspired. Thank you all so much for joining me and I'll see you all next time.